The only thing worse than two EVPs is three EVPs ruining the show. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling here to review AEW Dynamite for the 1st of May 2024. We've seen the return of Kenny Omega tonight, and I know it was the main event, but I just want to talk about it right now before we move on to the opening match, because Kenny Omega comes back. He's getting a big, a big announcement. Justin Roberts is introducing Kenny Omega to the ring and he says everybody dreams of this but only Kenny Omega has achieved it. The 7 star rating. I mean what the fuck? Really? Kenny Omega comes back from a long time and the selling point they try and put him over by talking about Dave Meltzer's rating system. Could, could you imagine that? WWE WrestleMania moment or something, Stone Cold comes out and oh, the guy that once got three and a half stars off Dave Meltzer, like what a load of shit. Surely there's better accolades for Kenny Omega than a seven star match from Dave fucking Meltzer. And people say that Meltzer isn't getting paid by AEW or whatnot. I disagree. Someone's getting paid, there's favours being handed out. Somebody's profiting something. Why would they continuously put over Meltzer? We all know that Tony Khan is a Meltzer mark and now Meltzer's star rating system is getting put over in the main event of AEW. It's fucking dumb. Honestly, Kenny Omega, potentially guy could never wrestle again. Massive injury. But let's talk about the Meltzer star system. Dumb. Very dumb. But we'll talk more about that later. So we kick off with um, the, we, t we kick off with Tony Khan, he's got a neck brace on explaining that he can't be there tonight to run the show, he's going to run it from his home and then he cuts out and we go to the Young Bucks and they're like in the, the tech truck, they're messing about with Tony Khan and they say that they're now in charge, I thought this was a good opening, I thought it was alright, following up on last week, decent, I like this, I don't know why they didn't do it on Collision though, I know that Tony Khan says that Collision has almost got a separate roster, but it's not a brand split. Well, to me, that is dumb. You should have your biggest angle on the, the start of the next show, I think, to follow up. And this is, unfortunately, the biggest angle that they've got. But for some reason, there was no mention of this on Collision. So, I don't get it, but yeah. The Young Bucks are here. They've cancelled Tony Khan. They are in charge. And then we get the first match of the night. Which is, wait, no we don't, so we get Swerve Strickland, Swerve Strickland comes out and then we get introduced to Swerve Strickland's next opponent thanks to the EVPs and it's going to be Christian, so Christian Cage comes out, he's getting a title shot against Swerve Strickland, he didn't earn one, he didn't beat anybody, what happened to the so called rankings, Tony Khan two months ago was crying and screaming and celebrating the AEW rankings, said that they're going to be more important than ever. Where's Christian Cage in the rankings? He hasn't won any matches lately. He lost the TNT title to Edge. Why is Christian Cage all of a sudden top of the rankings? And then speaking of titles, Samoa Joe came out tonight, had a squash match, didn't mention the AEW Championship. Why is this guy losing the world title and then completely acting like he never had the world title? He just comes out and takes on a fucking jobber. Like, why is Samoa Joe not hell-bent on getting the title back? Why is he not confronting Strickland? Why is he not trying to win back that world championship? I mean, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. WWE also do this as well, so I'm not just picking on AEW. But it's dumb as fuck. When you lose the title, you should be looking for a rematch. You should be looking for an opportunity to get back your belt. But for some reason in wrestling now, it just doesn't happen. Roman Reigns loses his belt, doesn't show up. Gunfer loses his belt, takes two weeks off, then doesn't care about it anymore. I don't understand it. Uh, Io Sky lost her belt, hasn't once said a word to Bailey in English or Japanese for that matter. You know, we, I don't understand. Back in the day, somebody lost their world title. Very next night, they wanted to get that world title back or they wanted to get their championship back. But in wrestling nowadays, somebody loses the belt and it's like they never had it. They never had it. And the person that wins the belt, they don't get any advantage. It's like they don't get you don't get to see the previous champion interacting with them to put over the fact that they lost. You know, the person that has the belt, they just lose and then they disappear. And then when they do show up, they've no interest in getting their belt back. It, it makes no sense. It's so fucking dumb. Anyway, Adam Copeland, he beat one member, he beat Buddy Matthews, the, the little simp who's always crying about Rhea Ripley taking pictures with Dominic Mysterio, beats him with a spear. There was blood coming from the mouth. 
I don't know, was it a work or was it not a work? Who cares? Uh, then Alistair Black comes out with the lights on. Edge was going to hit a concerto on Buddy Matthews. And Alistair Black came out and instead of stopping Copeland, he wanted Copeland to do it. But the lights went out and then Copeland had nobody to hit because Buddy Matthews and Alistair Black were gone. They disappeared. So, I mean, yeah, the opening match was okay. Look, so far to this point, I think AEW was decent. Also, back to the whole Christian thing, he did come out and he said that after he's done with Swerve Strickland, Strickland will, Strickland's daughter will finally have a dad that she can be proud of. So, <laughs> uh, Christian and this whole daddy ship is crazy. And then Kill Switch ripped out a chunk of Swerve Strickland's head, so, or hair. Yeah, he ripped, a, he ripped a chunk of his hair out of his head. So, I mean, we're about, what? 20, 30 minutes in here, maybe 40 minutes in, and I think it's been a decent start to the show. We got the Tony Khan and the production truck stuff with the box, we had Swerve Strickland and Christian, and then we had Adam Copeland versus Buddy Matthews. I think it's dumb that Christian all of a sudden is just getting a title shot, that is retarded, but the actual segment itself was decent, so it's just a shame that, you know, they couldn't piece this stuff together better, because I think so far the show's actually started out alright. We then get, like I said, Samoa Joe taking on Aisa Cassidy. Samoa Joe squashes him. Nothing to add here. No talk of a title, no talk of nothing. Orange Cassidy comes out to talk. And now we can understand why this guy never really speaks. We know why he never cuts any promos, because he fucking sucks. Trent Barretta comes out. Cassidy tries to attack him. We need four security guards to stop Cassidy. They can't really do it. But then big manly looking Chris Statlander comes out with a flat chest and somehow that is the barricade. So yeah, her chest manages to stop somehow Cassidy from getting past her. Don Callis then walks out, puts an arm around Cassidy and then takes him to the back. So are we getting Cassidy teaming up with Don Callis? I can't imagine so. Tony Khan has spent years and years and years putting uh, Cassidy over this whole freshly squeezed shit. I just don't think they're going to turn him heel. Uh, not that what he's doing currently is good, but I, I just think they've wasted too much time with Orange Cassidy being a face. I don't think they're going to throw all that away. So, yeah, we will see. Renee is uh, backstage with the Bucks. The Bucks said they haven't seen Kenny yet, um, but that's it. They bring in Jack Perry. Jack Perry says he's been made the scapegoat. And it's in a new era now in AEW under the Elite. So, yeah, they're trying to push the Elite, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's the best that the Elite have done in a while. Match three, uh, Jericho versus Shabita. We had some hockey pucks in this match. FTW Championship on the line. Jericho just looking like a bag of shite. Went back to wearing trunks. Not a good look for Jericho. I think the best look for Jericho would probably be to retire, but whatever. He's got a new theme song as well, one of his new Fozzy songs. Isn't very good. Uh, the big man comes out, Big Kaz or whatever his name is in AEW, he comes out, has a choke slam through a table on Shabata. Jericho gets the cover. One, two, three, still your champion, Chris Jericho. I mean, they used hockey pucks because they're in Canada. I guess that's a nice wee touch, but who really cares? Then we've got Cla Claudio Cascanoli. Beating Brian Cage straight into another match here. Claudio wins with a sharpshooter, taps out Brian Cage, and he is done for. So Claudio wins. Uh, wasn't that much of a match, but whatever. Claudio gets the victory. Match number five we have Serena Deeb versus Mariah May with Luther and Tony Storm. Uh, Mariah May is caught in the single Boston leg crab, and we get Tony Storm throwing the white towel in, so Tony Storm saves her apprentice, and that is it, Serena Deeb is now getting a shot at the title, as soon as she won it popped up on the screen, Serena Deeb's now the challenger, who made this match, if Tony Khan's not here, why would the Young Bucks care about making uh, Serena Deeb the number one contender, I don't get that, but it is what it is, uh, then we see Adam Copeland in the back, and Copeland says to Renee Young he is fine, Kyle O'Reilly's here, and uh, he said he's got Adam's back as a kid from Canada. So, no, oh, there you go. I don't know. I didn't even know Kyle O'Reilly was Canadian, but I guess he's got he's got Adam Copeland's back. Then Kenny Omega comes out. So, yeah, here comes the seven-star man. Omega walks his way into the ring. Welcome home, Chance. He talks about injuries and disease. He says that he was 24 hours away from dying. And apparently his words were, cool story, Doc. Can you patch me up and send me back to Dynamite? <laughs> Kenny Omega gets told that he could die. 
in 24 hours and his main concern is getting back to Dynamite so he can put on a 7 star match for Dave Meltzer. I mean what the fuck. Uh, he says any sort of blunt force trauma could kill him. So that's interesting. And then he says that even if it's 10%, 5%, 1%, he will do whatever he can to come back into this ring. Bag or no bag because Omega wants to change the world. And then he says because we're talking about clotomy bags, let's talk about two shit bags. The box. So he wants to talk about the box. Uh, he says that you may have fired me from being part of the elite, but you can't fire me from being an AEW because I am an EVP. And he says part of the power belongs to the best bout machine. Then oh, <laughs> Okada comes out, broken English, and, and the commentary is freaking out. The commentary is like, this is the guy he had seven stars with. <laughs> really fucking, this is the guy he had seven stars with, man. Grow up. Um, Okada comes out, speaks broken English. I am now the best about machine. Ha -ha. I mean, really? <laughs> Fuck it. So Okada says he's the best bout machine. Then Jack Perry comes out, hits Omega from behind with a two-on-one attack. Now, Omega supposedly can't take any moves. He's not physically cleared to compete. It's one thing having Omega maybe take a punch or something and then fighting back with punches, but this is so dumb. So Omega gets attacked, and then Omega starts fighting back with like actual moves. He hit like a snap German suplex on Jack Perry. Really? And then he then he then he sold his uh, stomach for a little bit. How how can this guy be in such bad shape yet he's hitting fucking wrestling moves? Why didn't they just have him throw some punches? I get it. The the majority of this roster are fucking wimps and they pro probably never threw a punch in their life. Like I I understand that, but for the sake of the storyline. For the sake of realism, surely Kenny Omega shouldn't be throwing wrestling moves out there with the condition that he's in. It's just fucking dumb. Why not throw a punch? That would have made more sense. But then Omega gets attacked with a chair. The Young Bucks come out to try and stop Okada and Jack Perry. Then they hit the trigger on Omega. FTR run out to try and make the save, but there's no... They, 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 I don't get it. FTR came out with no weapons and the Elite just bailed. Four on two. And they ran from FTR. Top guys, apparently. I don't understand. Um, then Omega was getting lifted. He got put into a stretcher. They were taking him to the back to put in an ambulance. And then, again, we got the elite attack, the FTR. Uh, one of the box says, We love you, Kenny. We don't want to do this. It's not personal. It's just business. They push over Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega FUD hits the floor. And Kenny Omega is selling this really bad. But it's like... Five minutes ago, he was literally performing wrestling moves, and now he's selling this little simple getting pushed off the uh, the stretcher. He's selling that as if it hurt, and that's fine. That's a good spot, in my opinion, but it's almost worthless when the guy was doing wrestling moves five minutes ago. Doesn't make any sense that he's now selling getting pushed onto the floor as like a groundbreaking thing, but five minutes ago, he's hitting German suplexes willingly. You know, I, I mean, come on. Doesn't make sense. Then the box ask uh, people to check on Omega, even though they're the ones that pushed him off. Uh, nice wee heel touch there. Look, I thought Dynamite was all right tonight. I, I can't stand the Elite in the box, but I think what they done tonight was not bad. I will give them credit for that. I like to think I'm pretty fair. Um, the Adam Copeland stuff, uh, the Copeland match with Buddy Matthews was good. The Christian stuff I thought was good. You know what? I thought Dynamite was okay tonight. Samoa Joe squash match, those dumb. No mention of a title. I think we need to get Jericho off our TV screens. Uh, Claudio beat Brian Cage. Quick match. Who cares? Serena Deeb beat Mariah May. I mean, I don't really care, but there was nothing overly bad, if that makes sense. I didn't. Those are actual matches that I don't mind. Brian Cage versus Claudio Cascanoli. Serena Deeb versus Mariah May. Samoa Joe squashing somebody. Give me that over all the flippy, dippy shit. So. Yeah, I actually think it's one of the best Dynamites that I've seen in a long time. A very long time. I'll give it a 4 out of 10. I'll give, I'll give Dynamite a 4 out of 10. I thought it was I thought it was okay. It was alright. Normally I'm fucking shitting on the show, but I thought Dynamite was decent, I guess. So there you go. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. Can't really rant on it too much. There's a couple of things that I hate with the whole 7 star crap and then Omega doing moves when he literally isn't allowed to take any sort of uh, physical contact, so that's dumb, 
but I thought it was okay. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.